Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. It's Sunday morning, at least Sunday morning here in the States. For all of folks watching around the world, happy evening, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be, wherever you are. Thanks for spending some time on your Sunday with us here. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, short but pretty cool catalog of a band from Simon Bray's Neck of the Woods. Lancashire, England, the band is called Gravy Train. Some of you might be saying Gravy Train. Pete, never heard of them before. Well, fairly obscure band, but they were on the Vertigo and the Dawn labels, Polydor here in the States. They did release four studio albums by like the mid-70s. They were pretty much done, but four pretty cool albums, I think. The band were comprised of Norman Barrett on guitar and vocals, at least the founding group. Uh, Norman Barrett on guitar and vocals, Barry Davenport on drums, J.D. Hughes on vocals, flute, sax, keyboards, a little bit later on. First couple albums, really not much on the keyboards, but later on, yes. Uh, and Lester Williams on bass and vocals. We would have a lineup switch or two after that, but that's kind of like the founding, the classic lineup of the band. So like I mentioned, uh, four albums. Basically, how do you describe these guys? Um... Hard rock and prog, a little bit of pop and blues rock at times, right? Maybe some other elements that we'll kind of talk about. Kind of an interesting band uh, that I think uh, a lot of people who follow some of the late 60s, early, mid 70s bands that we talk about a lot here on the channel, whether it be the harder rock and bands or the prog bands, or even some of the blues rock bands, I think if you've never listened to these guys, there's lots to like here, so I think you'll want to check out this catalog. So I'm going to start with my number four. I will say all of these albums, there's a couple really, two of them are really, really good. The other two are pretty decent, right? But not perfect. There's, there's like a, there's a divide here uh, amongst the, the four album catalog. So I'm going to start number four with their fourth and final album from 1974. It's called Staircase to the Day. You might be saying, Pete, is that a Roger Dean artwork? Yes, it is. That is Mr. Dean himself. Let me uh, just show you what this looks like. There you go. That is indeed Roger Dean. That is indeed the Dean. Uh, yeah. So, once you get past the Roger Dean artwork, um, same lineup as what I mentioned before. Uh, but a lot more keyboards being added to the mix this time around. And again, I'll talk a bit more as we get on with the albums about the difference in instrumentation amongst all these. But here, you've got lots of different keyboards uh, that are be playing that are played by their uh, keyboard slash woodwind player J.D. Hughes. All right, so you've got on this album, you've got Moog synthesizer, you've got clavinet, you've got electric piano, you got mellotron. All of a sudden, you know, you got a, you got a Roger Dean cover. You got lots more keyboards. Gee, let's try and become more prog than ever. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the case throughout the whole album, right? So you got the Starlight, Star Bright, which is the first track on the album. That, to me, sounds like the band has been listening to some Yes. It seems like that's totally going into like a Yes direction, but mixing with the prog, you've got this like little underpinning of funk elements. Right, with using the clavinet and the Moog synthesizer. Kind of neat, weird, weird mix, but I think it kind of works here. Uh, then you got Bring My Life Back to Me, which is kind of like melodic pop and folk. Uh, Never Wanted You is kind of bluesy, it's kind of proggy. Uh, the title track, that's an enjoyable slice of dreamy and folky progressive rock. Kind of think like Renaissance, early Renaissance. Like maybe the prologue album, maybe Little Ashes Are Burning, early Eloy, even Barclay James Harvest. If you like that kind of folky, early prog sound, that proto-prog sound, lots of Mellotron, lots of big, thick lead bass lines, lots of acoustic guitars. I think you'll really like this song. Pretty good track. Uh, going for the quick one is one of the more hard rocking tunes here. But it's kind of like straight boogie and kind of gen sounds like generic Slade to me. I don't know. It doesn't really work for me. It's not all that interesting. Uh, the Last Day is kind of bland, kind of folk. It's just very poppy, very just kind of just kind of there. Uh, Evening of My Life is mostly piano and vocals. Really well done. Vocals are great. Piano is really nice. Not really my cup of tea, though. Um, 
not really my sort of thing. And then you have the eight plus minute closer busted in Schenectady, which is another big kind of rousing boogie number. And for those of you who are from New York or familiar with New York, yes, they are talking about Schenectady, New York, which is up near our nation's capital up in uh, Albany, New York. It's one of the towns near Albany. So I'm assuming at some point in time, these guys, Gravy Train, were touring in the States and something happened in Schenectady, New York at one of the gigs. I can only imagine that would be the case, right? Uh, but it's an interesting song. Like I said, it's more of kind of like a boogie rocker, but it's like eight plus minutes long. There's lots of like extended little instrumental workouts and stuff. You got Mellotron here, Clavinet, you got guest violin, big looping bass lines, guitar solos. But, you know, ultimately, probably could have cut three, four minutes off the song. Right? It's just a little too long, just a little too much kind of aimless noodling jamming on there. But, uh, you know, I think despite the wonderful Roger Dean artwork, this is a pretty patchy album overall. Uh, but it does have a few good tracks. Uh, interestingly enough, if you buy uh, various reissues of the album, not the one that I have, but I went and kind of checked these out, there are certain reissues that have two bonus tracks. One track is called Climb Aboard the Gravy Train, the other is called Sanctuary. The former... Uh, or the latter, I should say, is uh, kind of quirky, kind of glam rock almost. Climb Board the Gravy Train. It's really catchy. Like I said, it sounds like early glam rock. Very cool. And then Sanctuary is more like this kind of groove-laden funk piece with like these crisp guitars, jazzy sax, big soaring vocals, clavinet. It's just really, really different. I'd argue, and you know, neither one of those sound anything like anything else on the rest of the album. I'd argue that these two session tracks that didn't make the album are, if not as good, on par with most of the best stuff on the album. Interesting how that works out, right? So yeah, so uh, Staircase to the Day is my number four. Coming in at number three, we're going to go with their third album, which is ironically called Second Birth. So it's not the second album. It's the third album, but second birth because a little bit of a change here. Got a little bit sort of a lineup change, and they move over to Dawn Records for this particular one, right? From, uh, from, uh, 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 do you want a complete blank? Uh, Vertigo, that's right. Duh. Do you want a complete blank there? So here you've got a guy named George Linden, or Linen, L Y N O N, Linen believes how he says his name he comes in on second guitar okay uh you've got uh jd hughes like i mentioned here is where he starts incorporating keyboards into the mix although it's mostly a little bit of organ here and there on this album and then uh new drummer russell cordwell plays like half the drums on the album and he from this point on becomes the regular drummer in gravy train uh you got a song called morning coming which has that's the lead off track which has some cool kind of like uriah heap style vocal harmonies these guys do really good vocal harmonies by the way um lots of guitar lots of flute tons of flute on these early albums holy moly which is really really cool uh there's a little bit of organ the song that's why the whole the whole track just kind of sounds like vintage uriah heap uh you got a song called peter which is uh, kind of like a snarling rock track. Think of like a heavier Who or Humble Pie, right? A little bit more firepower, but kind of similar in feel to, to those two bands. Uh, September Morning News, more of a bluesy folk piece. Motorway is a really great track that reminds me of early hard blues rock Jethro Tull. Um, it's got some nice little kind of quirky passages and arrangements between the guitar and the flute really really nice track i really like uh motorway quite a bit you got the eight plus minute fields and factories which blends rock folk blues and boogie it's got some cool sax solos some cool guitar solos uh, you got strength of a dream which is almost like a country rock song eh, not really my thing uh, and then you got toll puddle episode yes toll puddle t-o-l-p-u-d-d-l-e episode not really sure what that means but um that's kind of nice, but a little un uninspiring. It's kind of poppy, kind of folky. It's all right. Vocals and acoustic guitars are really well done, though, so I can't really knock too much off it, but it's not really all well for me. Uh, and then you got the closing title track, though, which is really, really um, wonderful. Second Birth. Really good. Reminds me of early Wishbone Ash and early Jethro Tull, if you kind of think of a mashup between those two bands. You got weaving acoustic and electric guitars, you got flute. Really kind of cool, enchanting vocals, complex arrangements. Really nice track. I really like Second Birth a lot. So overall, a little spotty of an album, 
But what's good here is really, really good. I think the when you compare the last two albums, I like this one a little bit better because the, the tracks that I really like on here, they're really notable and very, very well done, I think. So I think the, the, the good tracks on here are better than the good tracks on the other album. So, But if I was to start, you guys, on the Gravy Train train, uh, I would say don't start with either of these two, right? They're good albums, don't get me wrong, but I would go to my number one or two first. All right, so kind of a hard choice between here because I think my number two is generally considered their uh, best album or favorite album among many people who listen to this band. Uh, but it's going to come in number two for me. And that is their second album, A Ballad of a Peaceful Man. All right, 1971 It's their second album. Uh, do I have any pictures of the guys in the band here? Let me take a look-see. There they are. Yeah, they look like a bunch of English guys from the early 70s, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so here, this one moves a little bit away from their big, heavy sounds of the debut, although there are heavy sounds on this album. Um, but it's kind of the way... I, and I, ha I have the CD, I never had the vinyl, but apparently the way the vinyl was situated, side A and side B, you had side A was more kind of poppy and light prog stuff, and side B... B or side two was the harder rocking tracks and here um, most of the songs are a little bit shorter than the stuff we got on the debut debut was made up of lots of lengthier tracks although a couple kind of border you know six seven minutes long or whatnot uh, you got Nick Harrison who provides string arrangements on some of the tracks which adds a much different flavor uh, and you can hear that right off the bat in the lush opener alone in Georgia which is a nice song. It's a really cool kind of pop song with strings, uh, but prog or hard rock, it really isn't, right? Um, kind of reminds me more of the, the poppier fare of like Barclay James Harvest or the Moody Blues from a similar time period, right? It's kind of not really prog, but it's got these, you know, multiple vocal harmonies and the strings and it's kind of epic sounding, but it's not really, I wouldn't really call it prog. Uh, the title track, Top 7 Minutes, that blends classical and rock elements really, really nicely. Uh, great use of strings and flute, plus a blistering rock guitar solo and a big coda chock full of all these lead and backing vocals. Really well done. A Battle of a Peaceful Man, really, really good song. Really good song. Uh, what else? Uh, Jewel's Delight, more of a pop folk track with strings. Nice enough, not one of my favorites on here. Then you got Side 2. Now, it's, now it gets really interesting. So Side 2 starts with Messenger, which is much, much more in the prog rock vein with these complex arrangements, intricate flute and electric and acoustic guitars, big powerful vocals, and a big bombastic ending with crushing guitars and flute that just kind of like slam you over the head. Really good song. Really good song. Wild as all hell. Really like that a lot. Uh, Can Anybody Hear Me is a crushing blend of Black Sabbath style riffing and flute. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, think Tony Iommi and, and Ian Anderson, this, this is what they maybe would have come up with, right, if they would have stayed together in Jethro Tull. Uh, you got Old Tin Box. Again, reminds me of early Jethro Tull. Nice blues rock guitar riffing, snaking sax. All right. And then uh, you got some cool fuzz riffing flute and angry vocals on the heavy rocking. Won't we'll talk about it. Another great, great track on here. Uh, the album ends with the bluesy home again, which has got uh, you know dreamy vocals, nice flute lines. Pretty cool song. Nice variety on this album, and I can see why many people pick this as their favorite gravy train because it's got a little bit of everything. And I think. Uh So yeah, that's my uh, number two. Again, uh, really good album. I, I would uh, I would recommend this to spend anybody because it's got, like I said, it's got, got good variety on it. Good stuff. All right. But of course, my number one, obviously by process of elimination here, my number one, I'm going to go with their uh, debut album from 1970, just called Gravy Train. Train tracks, get it? There's the station. And there's the band. There they are right there. So here again, the debut album, Vertigo here, uh, Vertigo there in the UK, uh, Polydor here in the US. That This uh, features mostly lengthy five to seven minute, seven minute long songs. And then you got a big 16 minute closer, right? So it's uh, this is a much different album than all the others, although most similar in tone to the second side 
of the second album, which I just spoke about. Uh, and it's a really nice blend of like hard rock, heavy rock, and prog rock. The new one opens up the album, and musically it sounds just like early Jethro Tull, but with much richer vocal harmonies uh, that quite frankly aren't unlike the San Francisco psychedelic scene, weirdly enough, right? Um, just, you know, they this band uses like these kind of like uh, the backing vocals, unlike, like like every time I mention Jethro Tull, that's one thing, I mean, Lovey and Anderson's vocals, but you don't have like two or three guys all singing vocals, you know, and backing vocals in Tull. That's what you get with this band quite a bit. Um, what else? Uh, great guitar and great flute work. That's, this album is loaded with big, fuzzy, hard rock guitar riffs and solos and flutes all over the place here. Really, really cool. Uh, then you got Dedication to Sid, which spelled S-Y-D. Might just be dedicated to Sid Barrett. Um, and again, of course, the lead guitarist and vocalist in this band is Norman Barrett, but it's spelled differently. Don't know if they were at all related. My guess not. But uh, I'm assuming this song is dedicated to Sid Barrett. It's got big, fuzzy guitars, killer flute. It's pretty heavy, but then it's dripping with psychedelic overtones and early Pink Floyd. Think of Piper at the Gates of Dawn inspired vocals. Totally weird acid trip kind of song. Really cool, but really different. Then you got uh, Enterprise, which is another hard rocker. It's got some big rumbling drums, great lead flute. Uh, and again, think Tull from like Stand Up or Benefit era. That's what I get a lot of on this album, but with slightly heavier guitar. Much bigger, you know, fuzz tones on the guitar. Uh, think of Life, almost like proto-metal, It's got, but with flute. It's really heavy. And then you got uh, Earl of Pocket Nook, which is the big epic song to close out the album. It's 16 minutes long. It's got wonderful fuzzed out guitars, flutes, trippy vocals. At times, I get this feeling, if you could think of like a mashup of Vanilla Fudge meets Jethro Tull, that's kind of like early Vanilla Fudge, um, as well as um, Iron Butterfly, right? That too. In fact, think more Iron Butterfly. I don't know, for whatever reason, it sounds a little bit me now that I think about it, a little bit more like uh, Iron Butterfly than Vanilla Fudge, but definitely with all the flute going on in there and, and the, the, the style of the riffing and stuff, it's kind of like a mashup of those two. Uh, killer guitar solos on this track. You got a neat sax solo, and then towards the back end of the song, everything turns into like this chaotic bit of like noisy free jazz for a little bit. It's a very, very cool song. Really cool. Uh, I think it's a really strong album, a really good debut. I, I like the kind of the rawness and the harder edge of, of this album, but you know, that's just me. I, I can see why lots of people might pick this one as their number one. But I think you can't go wrong. If you're going to start anywhere with this catalog, start with these two first. If you really like what you hear here, there's, like I said, there's plenty of good stuff on the other two albums. I just don't think they're as strong as these. So, yeah. Gravy Train is my number one. A Ballad of a Peaceful Man is number two. Second Birth is number three. And then I'm going to go with a Staircase to the Day as my number four. So... If you are familiar with the Gravy Train catalog, let us know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell to get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, as well as our merch page. So uh, thank you for all your help and support there. And uh, Simon Ray, if you're still watching, uh, hopefully, my friend, you've uh, had a chance to go check out this little band from Lancashire, and uh, let us know what you think down in the comments below. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm P. Pardo. Stay tuned for another episode of Ranking the Albums next weekend. Till then, and next weekend, we'll be Fu Manchu, right? The great California stoner rock, stoner metal band. So I'll be joined by Jim Baki and Craig Kaminsky for that. So look forward to seeing you all then. Till then, have a great rest of the weekend, everybody, and we'll see you soon here on Sea Tranquility. Take care. Bye-bye.